way. It just gives you a general idea of what's, what's used to calibrate these growth models. So have you, staff, found that the, the projections are aligned with the current comprehensive plan for the area? Not the current comprehensive plan. Um, the current plan was prepared and adopted in 2006. Um, the projections used in that plan were based on 2000 census data and the projections at that time. Um, when 2010 census came out, we found, at least in all population, that we grew a lot more than was predicted. And so in the next two years, as we prepare the next major plan amendment, we're going to be looking at 2010 data and then its projections, which is what this is coming from and will feed into. Um, so the starting point will be a lot different. So in, in the past, when we did those original projections back in 2005, 2006, we underprojected what actually occurred. And you know, we started with, we start with our assumptions at one point, and we don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> we use our best assumptions at that time, and um, they may change, they may be correct, they may be incorrect. Higher or low, we just don't know. And it's one of the things, at least speaking for myself, and looking at these overall projections, I have to, interject a lot of caution. I go back and look at all the reports and studies that have been done over the past few decades, planning documents that have done projections for future growth. Um, I think without an exception, we have always under predicted what our growth would be. So I try and keep that in mind. Um, one of the dangers is you don't want to over project because infrastructure planning is based on this. So you've got to balance it. Um, but as an example, you know, the current conference plan that projected a 2010 population from Valdosta, which showed a net change from 2000 to 2010. Um, the city grew by twice as much as what was predicted. Um, they forecast about a five or 6,000 population increase, and the increase was 11,000, um, despite the economic downturn in 2008. Um, makes me kind of curious as to what our current population actually is right now. Um, it's definitely higher than it was in 2010. One other thing you said was that we currently have enough land to support any future industrial growth. Is that, is that what I heard? Yeah, identified land in an industrial growth area will, will more than accommodate the projected manufacturing and wholesale employment. Assuming that historic trends apply. So what's shown is lavender on this map. All these, if you sum up all the acres in all these areas, that will more than accommodate your growth out to 2040. That's not to say that they won't accommodate uh, industrial growth in years past 2040. That's certainly a possibility. But based on our assumptions, we've got more than that. Sounds like we've got the parts paid for now. In a, in a cheap money time, so uh, the industrial parks. So. Right, and these are large tracts of land. Right. But what, what it boils down to, what she's saying, is our land use in terms of zoning and future land designations, we're a little bit out of balance. We have more forecasted for industrial growth than we truly need in the next 20, 30 I years. I could turn that up. But uh, all of the land use categories, that is, in my opinion, the only one you want to over project. Right. Um, because to come back. 20 years from now and then add more future industrial area tends to upset the out cart and land use and people's expectations. So I would much rather have a little extra projected for need than have it sit idle a little longer to carry us further into the future. Right, you have residential and commercial, you've got a little more flexibility for that. Um, industrial, because of the nature of the use and the intensity of the infrastructure that's needed, it's nice to look further into the future. Y'all, I just want to thank Corey and, and Whitney for their help, and really, you are the first ones to receive this presentation. That is an honor. Um, it will be done again tomorrow in a more formal meeting for the NPO, but uh, really, you are the first ones to see this in, in its entirety, so I think that's a real uh, honor for you, and we appreciate you taking the time, and, and Whitney to come down, and Corey to try to uh, take leadership and set this up, so I just want to say thank you. You'll be seeing this 
type of data again. Um, as they said, this is the beginning we have several major planning updates and projects coming. It's the same type of base data that's used in all of them. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your time.